I don't know about this weird thing. Hey, did you just stick your tongue out at me? So the story goes like this. I'm at an electronic swap meet looking for more restoration candidates for Mr. Carlson's lab here. And I did find some, by the way. So more restorations to put in between the grand receiver restoration series and so on. I walk past a table and this thing is sitting on the corner of a table and I really didn't think too much of it. I you know, glanced at it and thought, what a strange looking device. So, you know, it looks like some sort of project or whatever. So I go past it, you know, walk around a little bit more and come back past the same table again and the thing is still sitting there on the corner. So I ask the fellow that's selling this thing, I say, okay, so what gives? What is this thing, right? You know, and he looks at me and he says, well, I really don't know too much about it, but I, I know where it came from. So it came from an old psychiatric hospital that's been closed down for quite some time. Okay, now you have my undivided attention. A psychiatric hospital, what did this thing do at a psychiatric hospital? And he says, I really don't know, but on the back of the unit is written the evaluator. Okay, so now that just makes this thing really creepy. It looks like some sort of clown face and it's an evaluator. What, what is this thing supposed to evaluate? You heard the thing buzzing, like it's got a buzzer in it and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, you know, creepy factor 10. All right, what do you want for it? We worked out a price and here it is on the bench. So let's tear this thing down and see what makes it function and maybe we can figure out how this thing evaluated things. So hopefully the evaluations that this thing made didn't lead to any crazy decisions, right? It looks like there's just a bunch of light bulbs screwed into sockets on this thing. And you know, it looks like it's well put together, right? There's a little bunch of little light bulbs here. You can see this one is somewhat of a kind of an orange yellow kind of tinge to it. And uh, this one here is just orange. Sockets look nice. They did a nice job putting this into the face, right? They even did, you know, recessed into the into the wood here. So they put a bit of time into this. Red light bulb here. Another nice socket in there. Again, you know, very nicely recessed. Of course, we've got the, uh, the blue light bulb on the bottom. So it, you know, it really does look like it's in some form of a face pattern or something like this, right? On the back side, speaker evaluator. So maybe to evaluate some speech. Now it has times written in here. It says four minutes, five minutes, five and a half, six, and six and a half minutes. And then it says W and buzz here. All right, so what is that about? the evaluator. So they got times written down here. So maybe for speech or something like that, you only have a certain amount of time to talk, then you need to be quiet. You know, who knows? All right, I'll go grab a screwdriver and uh, get the screws out of this thing. Last screw. Only had to remove three because this Wood is broken off in the bottom corner here, so I just left that screw in there. This didn't look too far behind. Ready to break off here as well. All right, what do you think's inside? Let's find out. Some red wire. Oh, very nice ceramic multi-position switch, a resistor, and that horrible buzzer. All right. I'll just reposition things and zoom on in a little closer. Very simple circuit. So we have a nice ceramic rotary selector switch. You find these in old radio receivers and transmitters. Somebody's changed the function of the switch by joining both halves here with a little solder bar here, kind of interesting. So these are plated and they take solder very nicely when they're brand new. So that would have been very easy to solder that little bar in there. This here is a higher wattage type resistor, so a wire wound resistor. Very commonly, again, found in radio receivers and transmitters and televisions and all sorts of things from, from way back when. Very common parts. Probably the most common part of all is the old doorbell buzzer. So these were usually found in apartment buildings and things like that way back when. They were kind of aggravating, an aggravating buzz sound that they made. So the circuit is so incredibly simple 
so I'll just back this out here. The circuit is so incredibly simple. There is no lead out wires. It's just a, you know, a line cord running in. So somebody had to sit beside this box and operate this box somehow, right? Because there's no control. There's no timer in here or anything. And you can see that there's times written there. So somebody would have to sit with a timer or stopwatch. And it was obviously used for signaling. I would think to some form of a remote speaker somewhere. They would maybe look at the color of the bulb or something like that. The buzzer would be used for some function. So if you've operated a box like this or had one or, you know, something like that, definitely leave a comment below and share your stories. It'd be very interesting to read. And if you have, uh, if you actually worked one of these things, interesting. So anyways, that's my take on it. That's my guess. So uh, I'll plug this thing into my current limited isolation transformer and variac supply here. And I'll flip the switch. I think it is on buzz still. It is. Look at that buzzer go there. So just to zoom in on this, let's take a look at that nice arcing contact. I'll explain how these things work, the actual buzzers, how they work. So I'll check out this contact here. It vibrates so much the actual piece of wood is moving along the bench. Put that here again. So how these work, I'll just unplug this from the isolation transformer. It's completely isolated and off, but I always feel safer unplugging it. So how these things work is very, very simple. So you can see we have a contact here and an arm, this long arm here. And you can see it moves in and out just like a relay. And you can see the contact opening up when I push this in towards the coils. Right? See that open up? So what happens is when this is in its off state, this needs to make contact so that it can energize these two coils. So it turns them into electromagnets. When these things turn into electromagnets, it pulls this arm in like this. So it makes this arm touch the electromagnets. Well, what happens when that happens? Well, the contact opens. So when that contact opens, they're no longer electromagnets anymore, right? They're de-energized. So it falls shut again. All right, when it falls shut, these turn into electromagnets again, pulls in, it breaks the contact, and it falls shut again. So you get this action, but very, very fast, just like that. And of course, when it's doing that very, very fast, you get a buzzer. That's how these things work. Very, very simple. All right, but in judging by the spark there, you know, it's uh, obviously can imagine that those contacts wouldn't last all that incredibly long. So the company would have uh, definitely been in the money. So these things are just burning the contacts away like crazy. But that's its job, right? And these things were super cheap way back in the day. That's why you saw them in you know every apartment building and everything like that. So at least I remember that. So uh, <laughs> going back a little bit right there. Anyways, so there you have it. So that's what it is. So let's check out the function of the bulbs on the front. How about that? So I'll just uh, back this out here. Let's put this on here like so. Let's pinch that together, hold this like this. Where are we? We're still on buzz, so plug it back in. You can hear how the box amplifies that buzz just horribly, right? So uh, I'll keep this here and turn the light off. So turn this on. Listen to that. Isn't that horrible? There's the, uh, the blue light. That would be off, I imagine. Yep, that's off. And then we've got well, that lamp there, that one there, that one there. Back to the blue light and the buzzer again. And that's it. That's all there's to it. So definitely somebody had to sit beside this thing and control it. So once you know what's inside this thing, it really isn't all that creepy. But what this thing was used for could be a completely different story. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed opening up the creepy little light box. If you are enjoying the videos here, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this along with restorations and repairs and reverse engineering and circuitry design and all that kind of stuff. So if you're all about electronics, this is the place that you're going to want to be. So don't forget to subscribe and if you want to be notified as soon as I post a brand new video, 
Don't forget to tap that bell symbol, that's very important. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now. Meh, doesn't look enough like a tongue. Let's get rid of this light bulb and put in a light bulb that looks more like a tongue. Ever seen one of these before? Now that looks more like a tongue. There we go. Now it looks like it's really sticking its tongue out. There we go.